Good morning. I'm Jody McLean, and I'm here today to offer a daily devotion from Central Reformed Church. Peter is one of my favorite characters in Jesus's world. I relate to his impulsive enthusiasm as he often blurts something out when it's clear he doesn't fully understand the great scope of God's plan. I feel like that now, actually, and I wonder if you do too, on at least some of these days. Peter's struggle comforts me because it feels familiar. So I have enjoyed reading Peter's story. After the events of Holy Week and the crucifixion, I've sometimes wondered how long Peter struggled with guilt and sorrow, that he had let down his friend by betraying him in those final days. Peter does get the opportunity after the resurrection to be with his friend once again and even have a meal with him and in a beautiful demonstration of grace, Jesus assured him that he does indeed love him and always will, and even gives him important work to do for the gospel. It seems that Peter was able to find peace in that. By the time Peter writes his letter, he has lived with his mistake and Jesus's forgiveness for a while now. He has seen Jesus ascend into heaven. He's grown much in the spirit and he has gone out into the world at great risk to preach the things his heart has learned. The fact that he remains so hopeful and so passionate long after Jesus was gone is something I have found very inspiring. After greeting his readers, Peter talks about maintaining hope in hard times, and also he encourages us to live well as a family of believers. So let's hear a little bit from Peter now. I'm going to read some verses from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice, and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I pray that you will be strengthened today by remembering the gospel message through Peter's words. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus has a place for you at the end of all things. And in gratitude for all of this, may we live as servants of God, being kind to everyone, loving one another deeply from the heart as we navigate these challenging times. I'd like to end with a short prayer, a collect from the Presbyterian Book of Common Worship. Let's pray together. To you, O God, 
we give up the burdens of this day, trusting your love and mercy. To you, O oh God, we surrender ourselves, trusting our risen Lord to lead us always in the way of peace, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. I wish you blessings on your day.